This video is brought to you by Displate.com. Hey guys, me, it's your best friend. Welcome back to another It'd Be Cool, for everything's made up and the ideas don't matter. And today we're going to talk about the old man Necromancer, who lives with the dead, likes to play with poison, and you can see it on his face. And before I get into it, I just want to say, the whole idea of these uh, skill change thingies is to buff certain skills, so there's more options for builds, and not to nerf skills and builds that are already pretty, pretty good. Or just to make things a little bit more interesting. And with that said, let's start with the poison and bone skill skill tree because we got poison dagger don't you love the idea of poison dagger don't you want to use poison dagger i mean you could but there's so many other easier ways of doing things so i'd like to change poison dagger quite a bit and make it do 75 percent of the enemy hit points over x amount of seconds those seconds are reduced every level and also for the duration the target's poison resistance is reduced by x amount what's that get op it does sound op but then you think about static field which hits multiple targets it does 25 percent of the target's hit points immediately yeah it makes you feel like this skill is actually pretty balanced. It's kind of a run up and tag. Gotcha. Stick them. And then you go do your other poison spells, which makes it more effective. It's good against bosses. Bosses, of course, have poison resistance and reduce the uh, percent damage. Like static field does 25%, but on bosses it does 12 and a half. This would also follow all the rules of static field. Oh, poison explosion. Always living in the shadow of corpse explosion. Whoever, who's going to love you? Who's going to, anyone care about you? Does anyone take care of you? It'd be cool if poison explosion lingers a lot longer. Like we're talking like 20, 30 seconds, maybe. It does the same thing. It poisons the enemies that run into it but if you stand in it every half a second is dealing damage extra damage immediate damage it hurts make it hurt a lot make it feel like a firewall it should easily do more damage than corpse explosion if the target is standing in there for longer than a couple seconds bone armor is a really good spell i think most people use it i wouldn't really change it maybe it could be cast on golems give your golems a little bit of thank you a little bit of support thank you card thanks man have some bone armor bone wall i think is kind of an interesting skill it has some utility i don't think people use it too much much. Most defensive abilities I feel like people don't use too much, but I think it still has its uses. However, I would give it a little bit more utility. It'd be cool if Bone Wall can either, one, you can summon skeletons from it. Each time you summon a skeleton, it damages the Bone Wall. So the more hit points it has, the more skeletons you can pull from it. This gives an option for a summoner necro to not be completely useless as soon as his uh, army dies and there's no corpses around. It costs a little bit more mana, it costs a little bit more time, but you can still do it. So the other option is that it leaves a couple corpses or a corpse or two, depending on the level, once the bone wall breaks. It's similar, but a little bit different. This way, it takes longer to summon an army from bone walls, but you could also use corpse explosion or poison explosion. Either way, I would like to see one of these two options in the game. So I'll just give those summoner necromancers a less of a glaring weakness. Bone prism could probably just do the same thing. However, I'd like, like to get your guys' opinion on this. What if Bone Prism was Diablo's Bone Prison? And so you could do single targets a lot easier with it. And those targets that are in the Bone Prison are forced to attack. Like, I mean, if they're monsters, they attack the Bone Prison. So it'd be really good on, like, ranged enemies. And they can't run away. And then you can also, like, still, you can Bone Prison Town Portals, maybe. <laughs> Just to troll your, your your friends, other people who are trying to go to town. I feel like the Necromancer would do that. And last but not teeth, I mean last but not least, you got teeth. I think teeth actually is, is pretty good, but it's not quite there. Give it an option to do 3% chance to pierce every level. So at level 20, it's 60%, and at level 30, so you have plus 10 to skills, it's 90%. So it's going to pierce through everything. And maybe even give it some lifesteal, because after all, it's teeth. So you bite them, and you, you suck the blood, it's like the, it's vam uh, yeah, life leech, uh, vampire, vampire teeth. Isn't it the worst when you have your favorite poster, and then it just gets all rolled up, and it won't unroll? Or when you tack it into your wall, and then it just gets torn from the tacks? Or you pack it away when you're moving, and it gets all crumpled? If only it was made of metal. Oh my gosh, well you're in luck. This video is brought to you by Displate.com, a one-of-a-kind metal poster designed to capture your unique passions. They have over 1.4 million artists on the site, so there's a huge selection to choose from. And yes, every poster is made of metal. So it can withstand a lifetime of DPS. Displates are a 21st century canvas that's sturdy and magnetically mounted. So it's super easy to just swap out the posters. Take them down, put them back up. Extremely durable. You don't even need power tools to mount a display. No damage to the poster. No damage to the wall, no power tools, no frustration. This thing's gonna last forever. And you can even give yourself a pat on the back because every displate sold, one tree is planted to help save the earth, restores its hit points. And so far, displate has actually planted over 15 million trees in Tanzania, Africa, as a part of their forest garden project, which is pretty impressive. You might be wondering what kind of artists are on here, big and small. Even brands like Shovel Knight, The Witcher, Resident Evil, even Pusheen, and Star Wars. Look at the selection they got, and all, all, that, all that stuff that you might like. Again, 
a huge selection to browse through. And click the link below for a discount off your purchase. So if you'd like to support our channel, go to displate.com by clicking the link below and get some today. Really spruce up your bedroom or your, your, your apartment or whatever. That wall that's just sitting there blank, boring. Make your home you. Go to displate.com. And now on to summoning skills. You want some of this? Before we talk about skeleton mages, which is the obvious problem because they're terrible. They're only good and normal. And even then they start to trail off. I think it'd be great to have skeleton warriors and skeleton mage have a shared uh, a number pool. So let's say you have an up to 15 skeleton mages and skeleton warriors. You can choose all 15 skeleton mages or all 15 skeleton warriors or seven skeleton mages and eight skeleton warriors or five skeleton mages, 10 skeleton warriors. Yeah, you get the idea. I think most of the time when you give the player more decisions to make, that actually is a good thing. Choosing between skeleton warriors and skeleton mages will have more of a purpose. So let's talk skeleton mage. Why are they so bad? Damage is terrible. Not only is their damage bad, but a nightmare in hell, it's even worse because everything's resistant or immune. So it's like a double, this double bad, double trouble for these, these little boys. So all around skeleton mages need to do more damage. And for each element, they should have a little thing with them. Fire mages have a chance to do fireball. Lightning mages have a chance to shoot chain lightning. Ice mages have a chance to freeze. And poison mages prioritize non-poison targets. They try to get everyone poisoned. They want to share the, share the love. It would be really nice too if this necromancer could somehow change the element of the mage or choose the element of the mage. I don't know how you do that. Maybe it's a separate skill or something. Maybe you can uh, just click summon skeleton mage on the same mage again and it would change the element. I don't know. Either way, I think it would be very helpful. Then you can customize your army a lot better and that's, that's always a good thing. It'd be cool if golems are the generals of the army. Well, not not really, but like they're kind of your general, I guess. Each golem has some sort of passive bonus to your entire army. And I really like this idea because changing golems kind of switches modes. Clay golem increases defense for all summons. Blood golem adds hit points for all summons. Iron golem increases physical damage for all summons. And fire golem boosts elemental damage for all summons. Again, depending on what you're up against, if you want to go defensive or offensive, if you have more skeleton mages, skeleton warriors, the summoning necromancer is definitely going to be more active with what they're going to be summoning and switching out. And I think that's a good thing. They're going to just just sitting there eating their uh, lunch wondering what's happening next wondering how long the fight's gonna take cursing the bad guys and now one of the final skill tree the curse skills oh man what are we gonna do here i think all curses have some sort of utility there there's there's something really good about them they're useful they can be useful but the problem here is that some curses are way more useful than others and they kind of trump them and the problem with curses is that they override each other so you can't have more than one curse on at a time so it'd be cool if there were primary curses and secondary curses one primary curse cannot overlap with another primary curse, but a secondary curse can overlap with a primary curse, and a secondary curse can overlap with one other secondary curse. So you can have a total of two curses on enemies. And I'm not like super familiar with the curses and which ones to use the most and which ones aren't. However, all the ones that aren't used that much, they would be secondary curses. All the ones that are used the most would be primary. Now you can mix and match how you curse people. But yeah, that's it for the necromancer skills. Or is there anything that you really liked? Is there anything that you would really like changed? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, guys. These are always really fun to think of, really fun to conceptualize what would be cool to change and what wouldn't. So I really do hope you guys enjoy this. Thanks for watching and see you on the weekend. See you going. See you on the cartoon. Gonna go, gonna go do the do the do the doodles.